I think that we've just been driven so much by aesthetics that we've kind of like left our personality and our values out of home design. Welcome back. I'm Christina DiStefano. Thank you for joining me for another episode. This week, I wanna jump right in and I wanna talk about my desire to have a homey home, what that means to me, kind of the key components of a homey home, and also kind of my thoughts behind this, I don't wanna call it a trend, I feel like it's almost an anti-trend. It's like going against what we saw or what we've seen for so long where everything is on a specific color palette or aesthetic. So the homey home is kind of not that at all, though it, it does have some sort of structure to it to make it that way. So I still think of it as being like a design aesthetic. It's a style that I in particular love Particular, I can't say that. <laughs> particular, particularly, particular, per particular, particularly love. And it's really like the style or the vibe that we're going for with our country home. Originally, when we purchased the house, I think we were thinking of some things that were probably like a little closer to organic modern things that had a very neutral palette. This was before I started getting more into my interior design training. So before that, it was just, I was someone who really liked interiors. I saw things on Instagram. I saw things on Pinterest that I liked. Obviously, I like neutrals. This is my artwork. So as I got further along into interior design as well as just being in this house. And again, I will say this over and over again, be in the space that you wanna change. Perhaps you already live there and you already have ideas of what you wanna do. Well, we had a vision, but that vision wasn't aligned with like the, the essence of this house, the structure, the architecture. We were looking at kind of really changing things in here. And then after we spent, it's been six months that we've been in this house, we've kind of understood like the spirit of the house the surrounding land you know living in the country living in the like the woods having um, the influence of nature on us that has really affected our choices and so when i come back to this homey home sort of aesthetic it is derived from just that feeling of being in a place that tells your story. These sort of um, elements of the homey home, at least that I've kind of come up with, I've been thinking about this a lot because I've been thinking about our house and how we've transitioned from wanting something that was kind of this organic modern sort of thing that I was seeing and it was like, oh, I, I want it to be like this. I mean, I was, I was following the trend, you know, and I think I've, in this process, I think I've kind of gotten trend fatigue. And from that, I think it's like, I really want to create my own style and my own feeling. And I think that's what the homey home is. So it can be translated in different ways based on you and your history. But the key elements of a homey home, I think are pretty pretty much the same. And, and obviously you could expand on this but I think the number one thing about a homey home is that it is eclectic. Like there are pieces in a homey home that do not look like they were all purchased at CB2 or you know, like at the same store, Crate and Barrel, Williams Sonoma. Like the the items in that home, you cannot really identify necessarily where they were purchased. It's an eclectic mix of things. So you could have a chair that belonged to your grandfather. You could have a dining table that belonged to your aunt. You could have a like a a, a small accent table or something that you bought when you were much younger. Like it's just a mixture of sort of generational things. It could be things that were inherited or things that were thrifted, things from other time periods. So there's, it's an eclectic mix, not only an eclectic mix of furniture, but a, an eclectic mix of items within the space, meaning book collections, record collections. Like if you're a music lover, having your records on display in a beautiful case, a beautiful shelf, 
having your books on display. And I mean real books, not those fake books that are like specific colors to go with your decor. Real books, like you are a person who reads books, a book hoarder like me, so you have your beautiful books on display, cabinets with beautiful dishes on display, like things that kind of tell the story of you. So it's not following any certain color palette necessarily, and it's not following any certain kind of like design code, but rather everything somehow balances and works together because you're paying attention to symmetry, you're paying attention to proportion, you're paying attention to the lighting, like the fundamentals of what makes a space feel good, and then in that space are your things, okay? So your, your things that are like part of your history. It's also very organized, so that's what I meant. Like you have your items on display, so that way you have a home that is not chaotic, you know, a homey home I don't think is chaotic, sloppy, messy, or dirty. It's really more about showcasing your things in a clean, tidy, and organized way. And then also having ample storage for things that you want to tuck away. So your pantry space, closets that are built out, places where everything kind of has its place and you know where to find it. So I think organization is very key to a homey home because Homey home is not about clutter at all. It it can be, it can, it can range from being a little more of like a minimal collector style, which I'll talk to you in another video about that because that's something I really like, or to someone who's more of a maximalist. But despite where you are on that sort of, um, what do you call it, that sort of, what is this thing called? <laughs> spectrum wherever you are on that whether leaning towards minimalism or leaning towards um, maximalism you are still organized everything has like a balance to it it feels good in in the space one of the things that I really love that also is a part of this kind of homey home are memories on display so that could be, I've seen, that could be things like, okay, number one, I think it would be great to have real photos of your family. And I'm not talking about these sort of staged uh, photos taken in a studio where everybody's wearing the same color and it looks like something you put like on a Christmas card. Not like that. Those are not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about candid photos of you and your family or you and your partner traveling, having dinner together, like doing things that you you can remember when you see these unstaged photos. And they could be in color, black and white, but the main point is that these photos tell the story of you. They're not staged photos that tell the story of you going to a studio and having a professional photographer take your photo. They're telling the story of you and memories of things that you've experienced together on display. A homey home is also very well lived in, meaning the fabrics are inviting, the textures are inviting. There, again, you can explore like things that are a little more eclectic, things that are not so matchy-matchy, everything is of the same three colors in this specific color palette. You know, you may have a sofa that's in like a faded black velvet, which I think is so beautiful. And then you have a chair that's in a contrasting color, but somehow those colors come together because maybe a piece of artwork or maybe your book collection kind of pulls those colors together. I think it's like kind of a little nostalgic feeling. We are craving, like we live in a world right now where things are changing so quickly. And I think that I myself personally have been feeling very nostalgic for old times and I I kind of what brought this whole thing on was I was watching some movies over the holidays and I was going back and looking at like older movies like when I watch Home Alone, Marley and Me, oh The Family Stone, like movies like that and you see these people that are in these homes and they really look like a home. <laughs> It's not like, okay, I also watched Beetlejuice, so the house that they live in on the movie Beetlejuice 
the architecture is very wonky to me on the outside but inside it's like their home and they the couple like bought this home and they were fixing it up themselves and they were taking a lot of pride in, in their home and it and it looked like their home and it and you could tell that it felt good inside of that home and then i'm not going to ruin the story of beetlejuice for you but then some other people move in you know the house changes hands i'm not going to say how but other people move in and this woman decides to you know they come in from new york city which <laughs> don't give New Yorkers a bad name but she comes in she's an artist which I am too but she's an artist she comes in she brings her decorate decorator and she like tears everything out and completely does it starts guts the place and it's now this like wonky crazy dark and strange world that she's created within this like New England kind of home so it, it's like it, not honoring the architecture of the home and I think that a homey home does honor the architecture of the home it's not like gutting and getting rid of everything within a home because you want to create something else there that that shouldn't actually belong like everything should feel like it goes together in some way like you're honoring the architecture of the home and I've talked about this in in the video where I share with you the exterior house design. We were kind of like that woman thinking about coming coming in and gutting this house and completely transforming it into something else. And then we get in here and we realize that we want this place to feel like our home. We want it to tell our story. We don't want to lose the history of this house, but at the same time, obviously we want to modernize it. We want to put in a new kitchen. We have a designated dining room and while we will open part of that up, we want to keep part of it enclosed because we want to have that little special place that is for dining. Like getting a big table, lots of chairs, plenty of room to have guests family members come over and kind of enjoy a meal together. Cooking is a very big part of our home. And then also speaking of cooking goes to the kitchen. Does the kitchen feel like a real kitchen? I know there was a trend with kind of kitchens that don't look like kitchens. And while I kind of like that, I also really like the idea of a kitchen that actually looks like a kitchen that someone would cook in. It feels like home and maybe it's the that feeling of nostalgia that I have right now just with the world being like so crazy right now and just wanting to have a place that I can create that will nurture me, that will nurture my husband, that will nurture us as we nurture it. And I, I feel that that is what home is. Home is that place that nurtures us and in return we nurture it back. So those are my thoughts on a homey home. I hope you enjoy this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe and like the video. I have to remind myself to ask this because I'm not, I, I'm not like, I, I'm definitely feeling challenged with these videos to try to speak to you in a linear way. My brain does not think in a linear way. It thinks like this and then it goes over here and then it goes over here and over here. So I'm trying to wrangle these thoughts up for you. It's actually a little more challenging than I, I thought. So on that note, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next week. And yeah, sending you so much love from New York. Bye.